Uh, say, Butch, there's something I want to talk to you about. You know, uh, one of these days when Hattie comes down to market to get some of that nice lamb, your hand should slip and a little chicken got in there with that lamb. Girls, isn't he handsome? Probably you know, Lucille you know, Ball's you know, best movie from the 30s, a decade her screwball hand. personality yeah. always yeah. seemed to recall, yeah. was this one from RKO, Stage Door, directed by the sardonic Gregory LaCava and co-starring yeah, Catherine yeah, Hepburn and Ginger Rogers, both in bigger and better roles. That seemed to be Lucille Ball's fate in big screen movies throughout her career, but no other performers had such a sweet revenge on pictures and the industry that shunned her. She had first appeared in films as an anonymous Goldwyn girl in the 1933 Eddie Cantor vehicle Roman Scandals. RKO put her under contract and she could be seen briefly in the Astaire Rogers vehicle Follow the Fleet and then playing leading roles in several less than memorable B pictures and acting fairly straight to the Marx Brothers in room service. It was around this time that Orson Welles signed to make his first movie for RKO, and among his first projects was one for which he wanted to cast, Lucille Ball. It was a wild comedy, but the studio overruled Orson and used her instead for more second-rate musicals and comedies before her contract expired, and she was signed with MGM, where they used her even less well, as here, for example, in a number from their glossy review, The Ziegfeld Follies, directed by Vincent Minnelli. Generally, the 40s for Lucille Ball were no doubt as frustrating in their way as the 30s had been. Though she had much larger and better roles, they weren't in the A pictures her talent warranted. In 1949, she did her first of four movies with you Bob Hope, Alfred Jones, based on a here here Damon me. Runyon story, and Art. starred in a couple of B-budget comedies, and sure when she got pregnant, had to bow out of a showy part in C.B. DeMille's The Greatest yeah, Show on Earth. For one season, Lucy done a radio show called My Favorite Husband, which turned out to be the catalyst for what was to become Lucille Ball's extraordinary reversal. The premise of the radio program, Lucy as wacky wife to sober husband, was transferred in 1951 to her real husband and family and became, of course, the most popular series in television history. Co-starring Desi Arnaz, Vivian Vance, and William Frawley, the I Love Lucy shows were shot on film with three cameras in front of a live audience a then-revolutionary form which combined the best elements of film and live theater to produce an amazingly timeless, endlessly delightful number of sparkling domestic comedies. A few years later, Lucy's company, Desi Lu, actually bought the RKO lot, that same lot on which Lucille Ball had been neglected in second-rate parts. Desi Lu bought RKO and produced TV work from then on until the company, with Lucy still as president and majority stockholder, was finally sold in 1968 for $17 million. On her Lucy segments, she could at last be starred with all those leading men she never got in pictures. Apology. For over two decades at least, more people saw Lucille Ball than any other actress in the world, and she also was captured on more hours of film than any other performer in picture history. No woman in show business has been more successful, nor has anyone else so brilliantly, so dazzlingly carried forth the tradition of 20s slapstick and 30s screwball comedy into the second half of this troubled century. No other woman, too, has made as many people laugh, has lightened the burden for so many, through the force of her talent, craft, and spirit. How do you thank someone for a trillion lives? <laughs>